Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently July 2023, and we just finished the iconic grass tennis tournament, Wimbledon. And we watched one of the most iconic finals matches ever, Carlos Alcaraz versus Novak Djokovic. In today's video, I have a game for you that rivals Novak versus Carlos. This game is absolutely sensational. It's played between two 500s on chess.com and it features everything. Absolutely everything from start to finish. It's an absolutely brilliant display of chess abilities. And before I show it to you, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Folks, it's 2023. The world is more digital than ever before. Every minute of every day, in fact, every second of every day, millions of website signups and online transactions are happening. And at the epicenter of it all is one very important thing, your personal data. Nowadays, data breaches are more common than ever before. And there are literal data brokers buying and selling people's personal information. The smallest inconvenience of this is you getting one of those annoying telemarketing calls. But there are potentially much bigger issues like identity theft, someone signing up for a credit card in your name. But that's where in Incogni steps in. Incogni fights on your behalf to scrub your information from the internet in the places that you do not want it. And it works in just three simple steps. First, you sign up for an account on Incogni's website. Then you grant them the right to work on your behalf. And lastly, you just sit back, relax, and watch them go to work. They will take on data brokers and any website where your personal information might be located. Personally, I hope that governments step in and start fighting for the data of their citizens, but until we get to that point, Incogni is a fantastic solution. And my friends, you know how this works. Click the link in the description if you're interested in Incogni, and the first hundred of you to use the code GOTHAM will get 60% off your Incogni subscription. Now let's get back to the video. Our protagonists are from Georgia, the country, not the state, and Canada, the country, not the state. Um, white is actually, I, I don't know, sometimes these ratings reflect weirdly. It's like depending on when the game is pulled, but this is a 500 ELO battle. They're both given uh, honorary grandmaster titles, and uh, this game was sent to me. This game was sent to me, and, and, and the person that sent me this game said this was my friend. My friend played this game. So, I, I don't know if that's true. Maybe they played this game. In any case, we have a Karo Khan defense. Clearly, Black is a Gotham viewer. Black is a Gotham subscriber. And uh, they're playing the Karo Khan. Obviously, the idea of the Karo Khan is not to put the knight on the traditional square, but to fight for the center with the move d5, supported with the pawn on d6. White develops the knight to f3. Very, very principled second move. Although a bit more principled would be, if you can take the center with two pawns, you should take the center with two pawns. Now... Already the memes begin. Um, you see, when you're 500 ELO, you, you study chess in your own way. Um, and sometimes that results in you only knowing one move of an opening. You're supposed to know, like, two moves. Minimum. So black goes here. <laughs> um, this is not a losing move, but... <laughs> You you played the Karo knight f6. I don't... You're supposed to go here, because if you put your knight in the center with no pawns, they can go here, which is very unpleasant. And that's actually exactly what Jamal does. Jamal thinks for a little bit. Two, two seconds only it took Jamal to play this move e5. And I got to give Jamal credit, because, uh, you know, you could have played d3. You could have played knight c3. You could have also just hung the pawn, which is a very beginner thing to do. But he, But they played e5. And now white played knight to e4, and, and, and again, this is why you don't want to put your knight in the center as a beginner, because it's just going to get booted around a, a million times. And now white played d3, and, and disaster struck very early in this game. I don't know if black is a genius here, or very unlucky, but black spends a bit of time and takes on f2. So what do you think? Do you think black was a genius and was like, I'm going to sack my knight so white cannot castle? Right? Because now white loses the right to castle. Or did black just think the knight was trapped? Like, did black realize, I can't go there, 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 I can't go there. So I'm just going to go here because I can take something. Now, black can go here. Uh, the knight is not trapped. 
The knight is not trapped. The knight is not trapped. You have pawns to defend your knight, which beginners might forget. So, we don't know. Um, we, we don't know if uh, the person playing with black is, is brilliant or not, but black plays, knight takes f2, and, 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 um, and white has lost the right to castle, but has a commanding advantage because they are up material. Now, what should white do next? Finish up developing the knight and the bishop, get this bishop out, or push the center pawn and get the bishop out more actively. And now white can do call, something called uh, castling by hand, which is moving the rook like this, and then sliding the king to the traditional castling square. And white is able to do that because white has a big advantage and more material. Neck crack. Black plays e6, which just makes the situation worse. Uh, it, it's, it's move five. Black has lost the knight. B black has not developed anything. Uh, so black really should fight for the center and develop these pieces. Uh, you know, e6 does open up the queen and the bishop, but it completely blocks this. And your knight has zero mobility. Now, again, what should white do? Take the center, finish developing, don't repeat, you know, p moves with pieces that you've already moved. Yeah, white, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, plays knight g5, which, again, I can't exactly explain. Um, maybe the idea is to do the exact same thing back to black. Maybe the idea is queen f3, queen h5, and checkmate, but do you have a plan after h6? You could go here, because I can't take, but a block, and then if you go here, I'm going to win your knight. So it, you got to, you, more, but back to the basics, back to the basics, get everybody out, give everybody a, a, a turn. Yeah, knight g5, black plays f6, which is a, not the best move, because you don't want to open up your king. So a lot of violations here by black. I, I'm not a fan. Take, now the queen should come out, but pawn takes f6, and now big problems because black has lost the g-pawn, so check is, is ruthless. Ruthless. Oh my goodness, king to e7, queen f7 in there, knight e4, bishop f4, very unpleasant position. This sets up checkmate, and you can't take because you're gonna lose the queen. So, I mean, it, it, it's really bad. White doesn't see that, though. White does not realize that the calling card of the knight move is the queen move. White goes knight e4. Now, black should go here. And then if check, at least the king is safe. And then you get center and development. And you're losing, but, you know, maybe you won't make it into a Gotham video. Maybe you're losing, but... Maybe you're losing, but it's all right. All right, black instead plays this. Uh, not only opening... Not only opening the king even more, because now this diagonal uh, is open, but, but actually just straight up blundering a checkmate. Because what every beginner needs to remember is that even though the knight is hanging, the knight does not have to move. Does white have a stronger threat? Yes, white can play not only bishop g5, defended by this knight, white can also play queen h5. And that's just game over. King to e7, and the knight that's hanging actually covers the, the runaway squares and the black king is brutalized because you played 10 moves and moved nothing but pawns and you move the worst pawns you didn't even move the center pawns much you move the king's pawn the pawn not the king's pawn but the pawn that's defending the king and the only active piece you had you drove off a cliff you had a beautiful black horse and you and you let it die for nothing you let it die for like three potatoes at the local market. What are you doing? So this is really, really bad, very bad. Chasing the knight, at least go here so the king has a little bit of breathing room. Anyway, pawn to f5. My friends, you weren't born yesterday. If you were and you're watching this video, then you have weird parents. Um, uh, yeah, you weren't born yesterday. You obviously know queen h5, bishop g5 didn't happen, but it only took us eight moves to blunder a mate. Like, my friends, it is impressive. If you don't get scholars mated in chess, okay? If you don't get scholars mated, which is queen f3, bishop c4, if you don't get checkmate in four moves, it is really, really hard to lose a chess game in eight moves. You have to try to lose a chess game in eight moves, okay? Yeah, this, I, this is bad. This is... 
But the night goes back to G3 and the game continues. Now, please, for the love of God, can Black develop more pieces than just pawns? No. You thought for 13 seconds on that move, what the hell went through your head? What were you even looking at? How did you not develop one of your diagonal pieces? How did you not develop the knight to a6? Okay, after the move b6 is played, obviously you're going to develop a piece, right? Because you're trying to get your bishop out. Obviously. So, white plays c4. Not much going on again. By the way, just for the record, it's plus nine because of check here, check, and it's not made, but you lose a full queen for literally nothing. Um, white decides not to give a check, not to develop any pieces, but pawn to c4. I, I cannot even begin to explain the move pawn to c4 to you, but it gets even worse because in this position, black, who had just developed a pawn with an intention of developing the bishop, does what every 500 elo player on the planet does. <gasps> he, he played c4, well, I need to play c5. You go full toddler brain. <clears throat> My friend has a toy, I need the toy also. <clears throat> this game is so bad, <clears throat> it's gonna cause me asphyxiation. <clears throat> oh my god. Yeah, c5 is just, I, why, why did you? You re-enable queen h5, bishop g5. I, why? But I got good news. White plays pawn to b3 here, and black finally develops the knight. Now, it's the worst moment to do it, because again, there is queen h5, bishop g5. Uh, queen h5 has been on the board for the entire game. Um, it was on the board here, it was on the board here, and literally, if you listen to anything I ever said, look for checks, captures, attacks, you would just win the game here because you only have one check, okay? Uh, it never happens. Now, by the way, bishop g7 wins the rook. There's no way to guard it. <clears throat> you would need to sack a knight at least and then allow this. Um, so knight c6, white now plays bishop to b2, justifying the move pawn to b3, which, by the way, black tried to justify some moments ago and forgot. Bishop b2. And now something happens, which I can't really understand. Did Black actually see that the Rook was hanging? Uh, and, and you may be, yeah, like this is still here. All right, this has not gone away, but now it's in a slightly different version. And you know, Black is gonna get mated in the center of the board. It's just the King can't escape from checks. And <clears throat> this is some sort of mate. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm going to die. Uh, <clears throat> Knight h5. So you are telling me that a 1600... No, uh, wrong song. How many of you know that reference? There's a lot of new chess fans that don't know the 161660 16, lore. Uh, we have spent the entire game looking at the move queen to h5. Instead, for reasons I can't fully explain, white goes here. There is nothing... There is nothing to that move. And uh, like a good beginner, white very quickly realizes that there is nothing to that move and just returns home. <laughs> knight h5, knight g3. Okay, terrific. Now, black's last two moves are sensational. Black at this point begins playing like a grandmaster and plays queen to g... First of all, e5 was a fantastic move. I don't care if queen h5 is still there. Queen g5 is a fantastic move. It doesn't threaten anything, but it's very active and annoying. Knight back to g3, and now, th I mean, this is sensational stuff. Queen to g5, bishop h6, we call this a battery. Oops. We call this a battery. The queen and the bishop, standing very nicely on this diagonal. And you know what's a nice bonus? Queen to e3 is mate. That's mate. It's called, uh, like, a dovetail mate. The queen just covers the entire box of squares. So, black plays two moves, setting up monster diagonal attackers on a diagonal, and queen to e3 is game over, queen to f4 is powerful, but not game over. White thinks for a while here about how to stop checkmate in one move, and finds it. This is an absolutely brilliant technique displayed by the 657 elo rated player. In this position, white spends some time on how to stop checkmate in one, 
and allows checkmate in one anyway. Queen e3 is still mate. That, that not only is queen e3 mate, this move blocks your diagonal attacker, and if anything, it draws the attention to this area. The move king e2 doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of making sense. Now, I don't know if black, I don't know if white saw this. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't interviewed the players and I don't want to because I feel like I will lose brain cells. I don't know what white was thinking. I mean, did white think they could go to safety over there? Because I'm telling you, that's not safe. So, the king goes to e2 for reasons I can't comprehend. Black's last two moves are queen g5 and bishop h6. They attack on the diagonal. Now black plays d6. Why would you put out monster diagonal attackers and not even... Now, <clears throat> at this point, white realizes the fault in their, in, in their actions and goes, Oh my god, checkmate and one is on the board. I gotta stop that and plays knight c3, re-allowing checkmate in one move on the board. Knight to d4 is also brutal, by the way, but at least the king can go to safety. But, unfortunately, black was following the previous move, which is pawn to d6, strong tunnel vision, and played bishop to e6. Under normal circumstances, I would praise that move because you're developing a bishop, and you are preparing castling, but that did not... that's not the best move because that's mate. Now, finally... White realize. <laughs> will you? Will you fool me once? Shame on you. Fool me twice. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! But again, black black is just trying to play d6. But like black is like, I'm gonna castle long. You can't stop me. You you can't stop me. All right. Bishop e6, long castles. As they say, a bad plan in chess is better than no plan. Okay, d6, bishop e6, long castle is a bad plan, but it's only a bad plan in retrospect. During the game, the person playing with black thought it was a good plan, and I got news for you. I don't hate anything about this. The next move on the board is one of the worst moves I have ever seen in my life. This is the position. Black has an advantage here, despite being down a knight, because of how weak white's king is. Queen to e3 is a checkmate in one threat. White can stop this threat by either moving the king to shield it or getting a fight going on this diagonal. Instead of that, white plays an atrocious move. Pawn to h4. To fully understand the atrociousness of this move, we must peel back the layers. Number one, when you attack an enemy piece, you need to ask where it's going to go. Ideally, you also ask... How much danger can I be put in? A lot, because the queen has backup. Secondly, this pawn used to guard the knight. You have just invited the queen in to absolutely burn your house down. And third of all, the most atrocious part of this entire move being played is that black went here. That is a check. But it's not, it, it, it's not a good move, because now the king very easily goes to f2. But I have a question for you. 50-50, heads or tails, you are in check. You can play king to f2, or you can play king to e1. You can't go here because of this bishop. Which of these moves is good? And which of these moves is really bad? Think about it for a second. I'm gonna drink my espresso. White chooses king to e1. That does not guard the knight. And now queen takes g3, the only legal move, and this is mate. What I don't understand is, you just move the queen one square forward. How do you not play this? Do you think the pawn is guarding it? Let Instead of that, I could give you 10 guesses as to black's next move in this position. 
you would not be able to figure it out. You would not be able to figure it out. You would not, the queen just moved. You would not be able to figure this out, okay? I mean, I don't know, black has 40, 50 legal moves. In this position, with all this going on and all this action, black played the rook up one square for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I'm... What? It gets worse. The queens see each other. If white trades the queens, which is what you should do when you are winning a game of chess, white is just going to win because white's going to trade down. Now, the queen just moved here, right? In this position, white plays... Bi bi okay, now that move was good a, a little while ago. Bishop c1 was a very logical move a little while ago, but... This... This just hangs the knight again. Now black plays a move that I, if you paid me a lot of money, I would not be able to explain to you. In this position, black plays bishop to g5. Black spent 33 seconds on this move out of 333 seconds. What percent? That's like ten. That, that's like ten to eleven percent, or something like that. Ten percent. What? What? This can just be taken now. You got to take the queen and then take. Now white plays this. What? What are these players thinking about? What is? What? This has been hanging. Mate has been on the board for the entire game. The queens are having a staring contest, damn it. They could both take each other. What is knight to h5? The bishop went there obviously to take this pawn, right? The queen can't take the knight because of this. Does, but then you would see this, so you... But the bishops are also... Now black plays this move. How do you... You just see the knight, you go, I'm going to attack it, but what about everybody else? What? How do you just have a blatant disregard for human life? Bishop to f7, now white's knight ganders into the black position. For what? Or what kind of a horse is this? What is it doing? Why is it sightseeing? Now black realizes that they have bishop takes h4 check. King goes to d2. Bishop g5, and black fulfills their, and white fulfills the destiny, and now the king is safe. Knight to b4 is winning here because the king stops guarding the queen. Instead of that, black plays knight d4, which is wrong because the knight can take the knight, and you're not going to deflect the king from the defense of the, of the queen, but white still goes here. The queen can now take the queen. But instead of that, black takes the bishop. What? How in God? It's a shorter distance to take the queen. It's the exact same motion. The queen has the ability of a bishop. Why would you... How did you even... The queens have stared at each other for 10 moves. For the, for the last 10 moves, they've had a staring contest. Nobody has taken each other's queen. And now, now, now it's over. Now you can't even take the... And, and, and the knight can be taken, but instead we go d5. Knight takes d4. You can take the... There we go. Queen takes d4. Fantastic. Now the white knight escapes purgatory and takes on f5. We have queen to f4. Knight to h6. And it's looking like black is running out of time. By the way, by the way, another staring contest by just queen d1, rook f6. You just played rook d6 attacking the knight on h6, and you slide toward it, but you don't take it. Knight f7, rook f7, pawn to g4, and the game ends in the exact same way it has been played, completely nonsensically. Bishop to e2. Two random pawn moves, another random pawn move, and white plays rook to f1. 
Black plays queen to g3. Rook f1 is a great move. That's called a, uh, a skewer. And black just resigns. Black makes a move and on white's turn resigns. White has not even played rook takes rook. White hasn't even played this move. For all we know, white might go queen c2 or bishop f3 or rook here. Instead of that, with a minute still remaining on the clock, black plays queen to g3 and just resigns. <laughs> just ends the game right here. The mysteries of 500 ELO chess are absolutely fascinating. The knowledge of the opening of one move, sacrificing a knight for no reason, and losing the game in eight moves. Followed by only making pawn moves, then suddenly playing like Magnus Carlsen, e5, queen g5, bishop h6, mate in one on the board for one move, two moves, three moves, four moves, five moves, because queen g3, then a staring contest. I mean, this was, th this was so gibberish. I don't even... The queen is just... I don't even... I don't, I don't know. Uh, chess is hard, and we're all in this together. Just, just, I, just, I guess you just gotta get out of here.